Hello, how are you going? Um, so I am going to be doing another tutorial, as you can see. We're actually going to be making platters today. So it's a really simple one. Um, one that you can even do in like 20 minutes. How good. So a uh, couple of things you're going to need is obviously your ball of clay. Um, you might have one from us. Um, so www.modbyronbay.com, you can grab your toolkits and balls, um, we'll ship them to your door. But these uh, tutorials are free as part of the Isolation Edit um, Social Connection Project for MUD. So you can access them whether you buy from us or whether you don't. So it's just because we love you. Um, Alrighty, first things first, you're going to need a little cloth, clean cloth. This is going to um, be kind of your rolling base um, so that you can peel the clay easily off. Make it clean. Um, you want one of these uh, rolling pins so that you can actually roll your clay out and it can be an even thickness. Um, if you don't have one of these, I mean, they're like $2 from Kmart or uh, you can use anything cylindrical. So you can use a jar, you could use a wine bottle if you wanted to. You do you. Um, a ruler, mm, you might need one of these. Um, if you want to be quite uh, precise, like if you are making a square or a rectangular um, shape, uh, but I mean, I'm not really going to use this because I like to keep it wonky. Um, you might need one of these. Um, so this is your scoring tool to help join the clay together. Um, the reason I'm gonna be using one of these is because I'm gonna be doing a bit of decoration on my plate. Um, one of these as well, so your joining tool, you can see that it has the curvature there so we can actually join things together. Um, super handy. And I will be using that because I'm gonna be joining stuff together today. You might want one of these. Um, this is, I mean, really it's a trimming tool, but I use it for actually um, decorating my pieces. So you might want to use that as well. The options are endless. And then um, this guy, I mean, I usually use my hands to smooth out the clay, but you can use this guy as well with a bit of water just to actually smooth out the clay. So this comes with the kits as well. Um, this, you probably can't see that, is uh, your wire, this is to cut the clay. Um, and those are in your toolkits too. Uh, a little bit of water, never goes astray. Um, now, what we wanna do as per usual, keep in mind that whatever we're making is gonna reduce about 20% in the kiln-ish. Um, and that platters can be a little bit um, finicky. If you make them too thick, they're really likely to crack and it's just the worst when that happens. So we wanna be um, rolling out our sheets of clay at about probably half a centimeter-ish. Um, nothing thicker really, or thinner. Um, we're trying to avoid cracking. So uh, we're also going to need just a little dish. This is a little pinch pot, how cute. Um, just a little dish so that we can actually make our glue. And this is only if you're actually going to be doing the second component of um, what I'm about to teach, which is actually um, adding some, well, adding a face basically to your shape. So let's get started, shall we? I'm actually going to cut this in half because this ball is kind of giant. So I'm going to cut it in half. Also, we want to keep in mind that you know, if the clay is cracking a little bit, you can, oh, how satisfying is that? You can um, use a little bit of water. If you use too much water, it'll just make it muddy and we don't want that. We don't want that. So you can see here as well, there was actually um, an air pocket in this clay. So air pockets are going to make your vessel blow up or crack in the kiln because the pressure um, actually makes the shape burst. So we wanna be a bit careful with that as well. Your balls shouldn't have air bubbles in them, the ones that I've rolled for you. I just rolled this one real quick before, so you know. So 
lay this out. And as I said, um, you want to keep it pretty clean. You want one relatively big so that you can do your rolling super easy. So I'm just going to chuck this half circle down there and I'm just going to, first of all, just smash this out with my hand because it's so satisfying. But also, it makes it easier for me to roll it out. Use this one. And I want to be working from the center of the clay. Once I roll towards the edge, it's going to be really easy for this to just drop down and then my clay thickness to um, become very thin on the edges. I don't want that at all. I want a really even uh, thickness all the way across. So I'm just going to be a bit careful and I'm going to change directions according to what shape I actually want to be making. So again, we're making wonky platters, wonky platters. So don't worry too much if it's not the perfect kind of shape. The whole point of it is to be like a little bit organic with the shape that it's creating. And this is the, this is kind of the hard part because you're putting your, you're putting your back into it, you know? I don't really know what this shapes. This is kind of like a strawberry almost. But we'll see what it comes out like. Okay. And you can always check your thickness as well because, you know, you can lift this up. How good's that? So I can lift it up and I can check and you can see that that's way too thick. So I just pop that back down again and I just keep rolling for a bit. And you can see that I'm working from the middle. Like I'm working from the middle. It's really um, easy for you to have a little mound when you're doing this. Whereas we want a sheet. We want a nice sheet. And always keep in your brain that this is going to reduce in size ever so slightly. If you don't like the shape that it's actually come out like, you can always use, um, where is it? this guy to trim. So say I wanted to kind of take that off. I can, I can use this as my knife. How good's that? Um, so you can actually create the shape that you do want by trimming or cutting it. Um, I mean, I don't mind the shape that this is kind of turning out. It's all right. It's how it's supposed to be, I suppose. You can also turn this around if it's becoming too long or anything like that, you can turn it around and then you can just kind of work from the other side. If you need some tunes whilst you're doing your clay, hop on to Spotify and look up Mud uh, Clay Play and it will have two playlists. One is Isoclation and the other is, what did I call it, Mud Fridays bangers absolute bangers it's my proudest playlists that i've ever ever made so this takes you a little while mm, it's getting it's getting to a good thickness um i'm just going to roll it out a slight bit more perhaps to just under just under half a centimeter and i mean yeah it kind of looks like a strawberry but i don't mind it i don't mind that um, keeping in mind as well, when you're making anything out of clay, you want to, once you're going to be drying it, you want to be drying it inside out of the elements. So we don't want direct sun, we don't want like a heater pumping on it. Um, that's going to make your clay crack. Um, and when you've put all this effort into it, you don't want it to split apart, you know. So, pretty happy with that. You can see my thickness there, not too thick, not too thin. And now what do I want to do? I want to actually um, pull it up a little bit. I want to create like a little, little bit of a, I was going to call it a shelf, but it's more of an edge, like a little bit of an edge on this. So I'm just actually going to be pinching like that all the way around my shape also keeping in mind that if you're pinching and you're creating a real edge that sharp edge is going to accentuate in the kiln and you don't want to cut your fingers 
when you're just trying to have a nice time eating cheese. So just make sure that you're not pinching it too sharp. And we can go around uh, after as well and just with our fingers um, and a bit of water so that we can actually smooth it out a bit more, especially if it's cracking. Mine's cracking slightly. If yours is too, don't worry about it. We'll sort that out soon. And if you've got nails, I've got like little paper nails, but they still poke into the clay. So just be mindful of that. And it's quite a quick, so you can see this is quite a quick expedition, you know. This looks great. I'm happy with that. Now what I can do is I can just spray. I'm not going to spray the shape because the clay is really quite moist. I've got um, some wet fingers kind of like this. You can see I've created a little V here. I can actually just go around my shape. Just this is pressing the clay that is cracked back together. Um, which is ideal because I don't, any cracks that you have in your clay during the drying process, it's just going to accentuate. So, you know, if you don't want cracks, just do what I'm doing right now. All the way around. And if you see that here, I mean, it shouldn't be if you've rolled it out, but if you want to smooth it out further, you can wet this completely and then just use that to um, assist you in um, just smoothing out your shape. I've got a little crease in here, so I might just get in there a little bit more with my fingers. Okay, lift that up. So I've got um, like finger marks all the way around, which I don't really mind. But I might just smooth it out slightly. Just like that. Now, if you're needing a kiln location, so somewhere to fire your works, we have a full list on the website as well as a bunch of frequently asked questions. So just hop onto the website and have a look at the FAQ section. It gives you a bunch of information on what you're doing um, here uh, and what to do throughout the drying phases and how to care for your clay. Um, so it should answer most of your questions. If it doesn't, just flick me um, a direct message or an email. Look at that, perfect. Um, and that should really answer a bunch of uh, your questions and provide you a kiln location close to you. You do want to call up the um, kiln person and just let them know that you're using a BRT mid-fire clay. They need to know exactly what clay that you're using so they know the temperature to um, fire it at. You're going to be firing it twice. The first firing is its bisque firing. Do not glaze your piece until uh, you have actually bisque fired it. The bisque firing is just the first firing bisque. Uh, after that, you can glaze your shape um, and we've got glaze instructions on the bottles as well. And then you take it back uh, and you get it glaze fired, which is its final firing. And then this is food safe. You can put food on it. Um, you're all good to do that. Um, what else should I tell you? Can't remember but I'll probably remember later. So I might actually do a little um, a little demo of how I might do like a cute, um, a cute little decoration. So you can see sort of um, that I'm just, I'm not doing it too um, deep. I'm doing these quite shallow. And I'm taking the clay that it's gathering up out each time I'm doing it. This um, is going to accentuate as well once the glaze is on this shape. And it will look really beautiful 
I mean, you can't see it so much now. I mean, yes, you can. I mean, with the light, it's kind of perfect. But yeah, we'll really accentuate. I'm going to um, glaze this with probably a white matte glaze. And then all of the speckles from the clay is going to translate through as well. So again, I'm not doing it too deep because that's actually just going to... You know, I don't want too much food to get caught in here. I still want it to be easy to wash. And I would just continue to do that all the way down. So you guys can kind of continue to do that if you want to. Or you can even do grooves all the way down it. You do whatever you want to do. So what I'm going to do now is just show you as well how to make a bit of slip. So slip is just our glue. So that's where this guy comes in and a little bit of your clay, just a scrap of your clay. Um, and you wanna chuck some water in here, just a bunch of water, cause we're gonna be making mud, which is always a bit of fun. So it takes a little bit to um, actually get this happening, but I believe in you. eventually it will you want it to be a toothpaste consistency so anyone that's watched these before that I've done toothpaste consistency as per usual if it starts to dry out you just add a bit more water but this is what is going to allow us to join whatever we want to whatever we want to our shapes handles on mugs or in my case right now a face to my shape so I'll pop that one to one side I'll also pop this to one side and I'll finish that off later so I can show you I have made another um, shape and it's kind of a long face I suppose so again same process just rolling out your sheet of clay and then I'm just gonna really gently pull up just like I showed you before just gently pull this up and I should have used a sheet under this I still recommend using sheets but you can use your boards as well like your um, shopping boards so sheet on the chopping board because it's really easy for the clay to get stuck on the wood So I'm not going to pull it up too much, but you can see that I've just done a little lip on there. You can see that, yeah. You can see that I've just done a little lip on there. And now I'm going to do a face. It's going to be so much fun. So how I would um, actually do my face, you can use your tool to kind of figure out, okay, well, where, where do I want things? I might want... Um, the first coil to go here and then I want might want an eye there, ears there, we'll see. But to begin with, I'm just going to do some little, little circles as ears. So this inspo is from just Pinterest. So I might want to do a little ear, two little ears. So I would roll the balls in my palms so whenever I'm making like um, balls I'm rolling it in my palms because that allows me to have kind of quite a round shape so the way I join this is I'm using my scoring tool and you can see that I'm actually um, creating a really porous surface here I can't just create a porous surface on one edge and then expect it to stick. I need to create the porous surface on both of those edges and lock them together. So I'm going to do exactly that. Create my porous surface there. Add just a tiny bit of slip. Not too much, you don't need to go crazy with the slip. And then I'm just gonna press this in here.
there we go. And I'm going to do the same over the other side for my ears. Now I've really gone relatively deep with this so that I can, because I'm not um, doing much of a join here. I'm just relying on the scoring and the glue. Oh, nearly lost that. And then I'm supporting this with my finger and I'm pressing it in. I want these kind of to be on the outside, these little ears. Cute. I don't really know how this is going to turn out, so I'm learning with you guys. Now, I'm just going to pop this to one side because I want to make a long coil. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get some, um, I'm going to get just a hunk of my clay and I'm just making it into a log shape at the moment. And then I want to really gently, super gently, if I was to press this down, um, it would just squash it. So really ever so gently, I'm working from the middle out and I want this shape to, again, we want a pretty consistent thickness of the worm or the noodle or whatever you want to call it and if it starts to become kind of oval and become, um, become quite hard to roll out then you're just pressing a bit too hard and you just want to chill out you know so we keep on going and I'm just being really quite mindful of where the thick parts are and I'm putting some attention onto those ones so if this starts to um, crack, add a bit of water, or you might need to get um, a, a moister, it's a funny word, moist, might need to get a, a moister section of your clay. And just keep going until you're happy with the size or the thickness rather. So you can cut this to size. This is quite long. I'm going to need this to be a bit thinner for the purpose. So coils can actually um, be a bit challenging to get the hang of. So just, you know, Give yourself a bit of time to master coils. This is still quite thick, but whatever. I'm gonna cut that off there. So you can see I'm starting to form an eyebrow through to the nose here. I can't just stick it on there and expect it to um, stay always. We're creating two. We can't expect two flat surfaces just to press together and stick. Once they dry, they're likely to pull apart. We want to create two porous surfaces. We want to lock them together. That was satisfying to watch. Um, okay, so. Yep, I've got that there. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I want to do like some little nostrils because you know nostrils exist so do I want them to be yeah I quite like that you do them however you want to like you can do fully your own thing on here and this can be a jewelry dish this can be like a, a dips plate whatever you want it to be you go for it now I need the eye as well, so he kind of looks a bit angry. I want to lighten that up somehow. Oh look, just by changing the shape of the eye he looks slightly less angry. Oh, still angry. How to change that? Move 
flips over ever so slightly. So this is a good part. I'm not joining anything yet, so I can kind of move it around to see how I want to do this, how I want to achieve the shape. Do it that way. Could even do it that way if I wanted to. I think I like the other way better. And then I just want to merge this together. And I can see a couple of cracks forming around here, so I'm just going to nurture those out with my hands. And then I've got a little mouth to do. Which again, I'm just using my same coil you can roll out another coil really important what I've done here is I've stressed the clay out so I've um, actually um, stressed this section out here and I've kind of pulled it apart so you can see some tiny cracks happening I'm just going to use the littlest bit of water and I'm just going to nurture that clay back together so you might have to do that with your eyes as well here I'm going to nurture that back together there And that can be my mouth um, and then I also I do want an eyeball in there so I'm just gonna roll out this clay again and I'm just gonna press that into a a little flat dot let's call it a flat dot like that and I can chuck that in there And then I can just do that nostril a bit off. I can add an extra eyeball on there. Yeah, it's cute. It's pretty cute. And I might even add, I mean, do I want another eyebrow here or add what you want. We've connected the ears and now I, I know where I want things so I can actually connect We've got that kind of like that. I can connect the rest now. Again, doing the scoring method, creating those two porous edges. Adding a little bit of slip. I might actually use my finger so I can be a bit more precise. Adding that slip. just using a bit of pressure to actually join those two surfaces. Now I'm going to use this scoring tool just to figure out exactly where I need to score. And then I'm just going to move this to one side so you can see I know exactly where I want to score. And you're not going to see this scoring, so you don't need to be precious with it. Again, you're just creating that porous surface, that's all. And I'm also scoring this little guy. Then, once again, adding my slip and going for it. So you can see, using the same method, we've created two different dishes or plates. You can even put this on the wall if you want to. You know, you don't have to use it as a plate, you can use it as like a little artwork, whatever you want to do. The nice thing about using your fingers is, you know, it's quite a um, sensory task. Just wrapping that around there. See, I don't need a ridiculous amount of slip, I just need enough. And then... add my shape again I'm pressing down not so hard that I'm actually damaging the shape of my coil but just hard enough that I know that it's really likely sticking and then I can use this to just 
clean up that slip. It's running all the way down there with my finger and my tool. Just clean that up and I know that that's stuck, so that's great. Then I can do the same with the little nostrils. So this is actually a bit nostril go. Oh, it's right here. Great. So now again, I'm just going to make sure that I'm actually scoring in the right sections here. You can take your time with this, but I'm just being a bit rougher because I'm just demoing. Once again, not too much slip or it's just going to be a bit messy for you. Before I add that on as well, I'll just do the eyeball. together. Quite cute. Right, and again, I can use this um this sharper edge just to really gently help me out with the inside here. Make sure that everything's kind of joined and clean. And then just use your fingers to make it what you want. I'm pretty happy. with but quite cute um so this isn't my design i want to make that clear as well this is um from pinterest there's lots of little inspo uh, things that you can find on there um, on the mud clay play pinterest board um, from and any number of artists um, so a lot of my designs are my own this one is not so you make it whatever you want um, and please show me, tag me in a couple of photos or just send them through to me if you feel a bit shy. Um, any questions, let me know and I will see you in a fortnight's time. Okay, bye.